Hey there, this is James Wolfs with MTB String Training Systems and Pedaling Innovations and today I'm going to show you how to apply real engineering to the pedal stroke because a lot of what you're told about the pedal stroke has no basis in anything, science, engineering, nothing, right? So what I'm going to show you today is why the ball of the foot position is the worst way to try to apply force into your pedal. Now, Here's the thing, we gotta look at what is the central problem of the pedal stroke, all right? So we're trying to get force to go into the drivetrain. The drivetrain is what creates uh, force and, and forward momentum for us, right? So if we get the drivetrain turning, that's gonna get the wheel turning, and that's gonna get us going. And so the wheel is connected to the uh, your, your gears, right? Your gears are connected to your chain. Your chain is connected to your front chain ring. Your front chain ring is connected to your crank arms. The crank arms are connected to the pedal axle. And then finally, your foot itself goes on the pedal. Now, what is the pedal? The pedal is basically a platform. Okay, whether you've got a, a clipless pedal or a flat pedal, it is a platform that your foot is, is being uh, put on and you're trying to apply force into in order to generate pedaling force, okay? So you've got a platform here that you've got to put force into. And again, whether we're talking about this being a clipless pedal or you're talking about a flat pedal or you're talking about, you know, uh, a, a clipless pedal with a bit of a pedal body, whatever it is, right? Like you are trying to apply force into this platform, but there's an additional problem that you have to look at. And that is that this platform is centered on a rotating axis, right? So you've got the axle in the middle and it rotates on that axis. And so what this means is that as you go to apply force into this platform, this platform can easily become unstable, right? If you go to an engineer and you say, hey, I've got this problem, I've got a platform, it's centered on a rotating axis, I need to apply pressure and force into it. What's gonna be the best way to do it? Do I wanna have one pressure point trying to perfectly center it in the middle, or do I wanna have two pressure points spreading the force out over the pedal, right? So am I looking at just trying to have one pressure point here, right? And, and that's where the ball of the foot is. It's one pressure point. The ball of the foot is creating the pressure point that you're pushing into the pedal with. Now, the problem with this is if this gets off centered at all, you're going to start having an unstable platform, right? The, the platform is going to start rotating and tipping based on what direction that force is going into. Now, the alternative is to have, is to spread the force out. Instead of trying to apply force directly over the axle and keep it centered, you spread the force out over the platform itself, right? So if I'm able to apply force over the platform, especially on both edges of the platform, this is gonna make for a much more stable, much more efficient transfer of force into this rotating platform. I'm gonna have the force spread out over a larger surface area, and because of that, because I'm able to get pressure on both ends, I'm gonna be able to apply pressure evenly, and I'm gonna have a much easier time keeping the platform from wanting to roll and rotate on me because of the uneven forces going into the middle. Now, you can see that putting using the ball of the foot, it makes no sense from an engineering standpoint. You would never apply that solution to any other problem that, that has this central uh, you know, problem here other than the pedal stroke. And why? Well, it's just because that's what we were told, right? Like this was, again, this wasn't ever studied. This wasn't ever like really looked at. It was just an assumed thing that we ran forward with. And so, but when you look at it, you see that there's problems. So this is why I created the design that I did for the catalyst pedal. The catalyst pedal is long enough to, to allow you to get pressure through both the ball of the foot and the arch, it's, or, or, the, or the heel, the back end of the arch. You wanna apply pressure through both ends of the arch. It's not about taking pressure away from the ball of the foot and, and just putting it on the heel. It's about adding heel pressure to the equation, right? If I just have ball of the foot and it's not perfectly centered, it's gonna rotate on me. If I have ball of the foot and uh, the heel, the back end of the arch, I'm able to apply much more even force into the pedal. I don't have the pedal rotating on me, and so I don't have to worry about my foot coming off. There's all sorts of things, that uh, benefits you get from this. And a lot of the problems that you think that you have with pedals is simply from this problem here of putting one pressure point on a rotating platform, right? It, it makes no sense to use one pressure point to try to stabilize yourself on a platform that's centered on a rotating axis, all right? So you need to, you need to spread that force out 
over the platform so that you can create the pressure points on both ends, which will allow for a much more efficient transfer of force. Remember, any rotation, that's lost energy, right? That's inefficient. That's an inefficient way to transfer force into the pedal. And this is one of the reasons that clipless pedals came around, like toe, toe cages and toe clips and uh, clipless pedals is because this single pressure point in the middle creates that rotation effect your foot's wanting to come off and so they strapped your foot to the pedal to try to make up for that rotating effect and the rotation effect is coming because of uneven forces going into this rotating platform so if you fix the the problem of the the single pressure point trying to put it in the middle which you know is one almost impossible to get it perfectly centered and you know that if you do it is one of the most painful positions to actually ride from is to have that perfectly centered pressure point over the axle is very uncomfortable and that's why clipless pedal shoes allow you to move your cleat forward and back right because if that was it then they would have it there they wouldn't allow you to move it back behind the ball of the foot but they have to because it's so uncomfortable to push right through the ball of the foot so people move it back and they end up creating these uneven forces going into the pedal because it's more comfortable for their foot but it's creating problems with the, the forces going into the platform so again if you spread the forces out it's much more comfortable for the foot it's a much more efficient way to transfer force into this platform which again that's the central problem behind uh behind pedaling is is how do we apply force effectively into this platform and then get that to transfer into the drivetrain and that's what's going to drive our bike so anyways when you look at that problem from a real engineering standpoint you see that our current solution of pushing through the ball of the foot makes no sense having pedals so small that they're, they don't allow you to get pressure on both ends of the platform they're not being able to get pressure through the ball of the foot and through the arch, through the back and, and front of the, the uh, or back of the heel there, you know, on both ends of the arch, like you're having pedals that don't allow you to do that are always gonna force you into this, uh, um, you know, misloaded, uh, um, rotating, you know, rotating the platform because of the, the forces not going in uh, as efficiently as they could. So anyways, as you can see, definitely makes sense to try to spread those forces out over the platform and that's going to help you uh, improve your power, improve your efficiency, improve your comfort, all sorts of stuff. And again, that's the design behind the catalyst pedal and why the, where the magic comes from is simply just uh, applying actual like, you know, movement principles, science and engineering to the pedal stroke instead of just going along with what everybody's been doing for the last hundred some odd years and assuming that somebody looked into it because when you look into it, no one ever really did. So anyways, once again, this has been James Wilson. You can uh, learn more at uh, pedalinginnovations.com where you can find out about the Catalyst pedal and also at bikejames.com where you can learn more about good uh, training strategies to help you move better and feel better uh, both on and off the bike. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this tip and I'll talk to everybody next time.